Spirit, I uplift my praise and prayers unto thee. For you're teaching me how to pray. I thank you right now, Holy Spirit, for teaching me in, to understand and how to acknowledge you. Today is your day. Every day in my life is your day. Because I want you to be the fulfillment of my life. I welcome you right now. Father God, if you're already in the presence of this place, I welcome you into the study, this lesson that you have already prepared within my spirit, Lord God, to be released. I pray, Lord, that it falls on good soil, Father. And any, Lord God, hardness that's trying to prevent your seed, Lord God, from being planted, Lord God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, because it's the Holy Spirit have your way. I just want to thank you for teaching me how to understand and discern your voice. No longer will I say a it. No longer will I say, well, I, a thought came to my mind. No, it's Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we begin, we begin, Lord God, we begin with you. For you are the author and finisher of my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. One thing God has prepared with me to share with the body is the fact that let his word do the talking. You know, sometimes I, I used to get so caught up in trying to explain God's word that I way off the point. So God, we, I hope y'all have pens and papers or the phone or how you want to do it because we're going to do some scripture eating this moment. And I, Holy Spirit, act me. My name is on prayer, and I thank God because the Holy Spirit taught me so much. So the first verse I'm going to stand on is coming out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. A lot of my study came out of the NLT, and I thank God. You know, I love my King James, but I thank God it gives me a, a whole different point view of some things that I, I usually didn't understand. But it says right here, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. The title of my study, you know, so I have many different titles as we go into my study. You know, prayer with the understanding. And it's very important that we understand prayer with the understanding because we're going to acknowledge, you know, a lot of people can't say, well, my prayers ain't being answered because you don't have the understanding of it. Amen. So we're going into prayer with the understanding and learning about the true meaning of the praying. The definition a prayer is a devoted petition to God or an object of worship. Amen. Prayer is a spiritual communion with God or an object of worship as in supplication, thanksgiving, a confession. Prayer is also an act or practice of praying to God or an object of worship. So why do you keep talking about this object of worship? Well, I give you some study on it. People have a natural instinct to worship. Worship is in us. We were created to worship. Amen. And in the oxygen of knowledge of the true God, or in rebellion against him, people will worship other gods. Anything can be made into an object of worship. Some people object is money, some is power, some they, they worship movie stars or singers, some even worship the title, mm -hmm. who they are. Yeah. And some even worship themselves because it, most rich people, me, myself, and my, I got this, him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, God, I really got this. Even some people that ain't rich to say that. Mm -hmm. God ain't did this, I done this. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for God, it wouldn't be able to do it in the first place. 
So that's one of the objects. But what's the object in the Bible that God took me to? When it was dealing with Baal. It was dealing with Baal. And see, Baal was a Canaanite god. He was made of stone. And he was called the Lord of, of the rain and dew. And he was also known as the stone god who rides on the cloud. Oh, Baal. But I want to show you just who Baal was when it came to them meeting Baal. So we look go and we look it out of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 26 and 29. And I'm still uh, reading out of the NLT. And I thank God for his word. First Kings. All right. Here we go. 18. Now this is this is a little sermon about Baal here. Show you the power of their God. This is Isaiah then when it was on Mount Carmel. And now verse 26, they prepared, talking about all the prophets of Ahab. They prepared one bull. And place it on the altar. They called it on the name of Baal from morning to noontime. Shout, oh, Baal! Answer us! But there was no reply of any kind. So now, then, watch it go into that. You know how to come in and we be dancing and hooping and hollering sometimes. See, then they dance and hop around the altar they had made. About noontime, a lot of them began to mock. That's when the true man of God says the holy. <laughs> I got something to say to y'all. Y'all, y'all have to shout. So y'all have to shout aloud. <laughs> he's scuffled. For surely he's a God with the Lord Jesus. Surely he's a God. But have he daydreaming? Or maybe, is it, or is he relieving himself? Or maybe he's on the way on a trip. <laughs> or is he sleep? And he be wake up? <laughs> so they shout it out. Following their natural custom, and that's another thing that we know we follow these laws and rules and how we worship God because of these church laws. You no, know, in spirit and truth, that's what the Bible teaches. Amen. Amen. And so it goes to say, that, and then they cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood was out. They got this sacrifice on their own self to their God. Our God sacrificed Himself for us. Amen. Amen. So then they rail all afternoon until the time of evening sacrifice, but still there was no sound, no reply, and no response. You know why? Because he's no God. Yeah. Ah -ah. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah. But I want you to, uh, to stay with me now, because we're going to go to Isaiah 44. What I love about God, God answers himself. You know, we are his vessel. What he says, son, let me speak. It'll get fun. So I'm going to uh, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 8. And, and this is what God said about, about idols. It says right here, Isaiah chapter. And you know, I've been moving on because of my time. So if some of these you can write down. So you can go back in your own time and you want to look at it. It says right here, the God says, Do not tremble. Don't be afraid. Did I not proclaim my purpose for you long ago? You are my witness. There is, say, is there any other God? <laughs> no. There is no other rock. Not one. And I love how the NLT put it, no other rock, because we understand Baal was made of stone. God said, I'm the rock. All right. And another thing about that rock that I can stand on, I don't need rock cocaine, but God is my rock. Amen. Uh -huh. There ain't no other rock but the rock of my salvation. All right. Verse 9. Amen. It says, How foolish are those who manufacture idols. Their prized objects are really worthless. The people who worship idols don't know this, so they are all put to shame. Who but a fool will make his own God? <laughs> An idol that cannot help him one bit. All who worship idols will be disgraced along with it, with all these crafty mere humans who claim they can make a God. Say so they may all stand together, but they will all stand in terror and in shame. Mm. So my word to this is if it ain't God, it ain't good. You know, and we, we, we're talking about prayer, but the Lord is showing me, you have to have a foundation to build on. So I want y'all to just stay with me. Stay with me. Lord. We're talking about 
talking about prayer? Amen. Right now I'm going into the part talking about the sugar-coated prayer. We got to understand that God is not a genie. And prayer is not a wish in that. Some people take God for a burger king. Have it your way. Some people take God for a game show. Let's make a video. Some people take God for a joke, saying, well, it is what it is. <laughs> but one thing I, I love about God is this prayer really is about reaping and sowing. You know, how can you pray in victory when your heart is full of defeat? Because in the book of James, you know, I'm going to go there. In the book of James, chapter 1, I'm still coming out of my NLT. James chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. This is what God had to say. A lot of people don't understand. Prayer, prayer is about weakness. So you can't expect to receive what ain't in you. Amen. Yeah, how you go to God? Amen. If it ain't in you, then don't look for it because you don't believe it in prayer. Amen. Amen. All right now. Tight but the right. So we're going to James. And the Holy Spirit, I want to put marvelous all in my Bible. So I can pick things up and no, 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 no. We gonna do if if you really study your Bible, you know where to go in. Yeah. The Holy Spirit acting. Yeah. So we're going to James chapter one, verse five and eight. It says, Oh, well, I want to read that out of the out of King James verse. Because <laughs> I love how it's worded. And it's already ready to think the Holy Spirit. It says, if any of you lack like wisdom, let it ask God. That give us all men liberty, be free, and operate it not, and it should be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. The word wavering means doubting. Not doubting. For he that wavered or doubted is like the wave of a sea, driven with the wind, tossed. It. Let not, verse 7, now let's hold on to this. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything. Of the law. Because a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things we understand that in, in prayer, we, we get what we put in, or uh, what come out of us. You know? If, I, if, I'm, if I'm already in doubt, <laughs> but what I expect is going to be doubt. Because mm -hmm. the word says, so don't, don't, don't let that man think he should receive anything of God. And then we go to, I love it, we're going to Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 6, which a lot of us have read this before, about faith. You know, without faith. But I love to let the word be the word. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. <laughs> Talk about God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a reward to them that diligently seek him. So prayer is an inside job, y'all. Yeah. It's reaping in some. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to have that inside faith in order to get that outside result. So like I was sharing with you, uh, we're going to talk now about pretty prayers with no power. Pretty prayers with no power. And then, you know, God has showed me in his word in the book of Malachi that he's weary, a tired of pretty prayers. And it goes right here. And he even says why he's tired of pretty prayers. So Malachi chapter 2, 17 the word of God says, you have wearied the Lord with your words. How have we wearied him, you ask? You have wearied him by saying, all that who do evil is good in the Lord's sight, and he is pleased with him. We weary God with our words, our pretty words, and the lifestyle ain't adding up to it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then he gave me an example as we go if anyone misses these scriptures, just let it be made known. I'll give you the scripture. 
We go on to Luke 18, chapter 18, verse 9 to 14, where he was talking about the Pharisees in the tax collector. You know, and that, that Pharisees had pretty prayer. He had a pretty, pretty prayer. <laughs> but he had no power. He had no power. <laughs> he was wasting his time. <laughs> it goes right here, and I'm going to read it. 18 verse 9, me now my NLT. Jesus told this third to some who had confidence in their own righteousness. He said, and scorned every and had uh, confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went into the temple to pray. We talk about prayer now. Mm -hmm. One of the one of Pharisees and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God. Now, he's on, he on the dog, so he's like, uh, he doing the right thing, though, ain't it? He's got on. Got okay. I thank you, God, that I... I, 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 I. <laughs> Wait a minute. He didn't even give him the chance yet. I thank you, God, that I... See, the mind will mess you up now. Yes. I am not like other people. Jesus, sinners, adulterers, and I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Stop being the chest, y'all. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of my income. <laughs> you know my eyes? Mm -hmm. But the tax collector stood at a dis distance. The verse uh, the 13. And the tax collector stood at a distance and dared even to lift up his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Did. He beat his chest and sorrowed from the sins. Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a son. I tell you, just Jesus talking. I tell you, this son, not that Pharisee, returned home justified before God. Mm -hmm. So we understand. We understand about this inside job of prayer. Prayer is an inside job. I just thank God that pretty prayer with no power don't get you nowhere. Amen. So we, we, I keep talking about an inside job. So let's go to the word that let it be made known that if what's in you is not of God, God will reject it. Amen. A lot of people think, you know how I have people tell you, you can come to God any kind of way. As a sinner, you can come to him any kind of way because you ain't got no one way to come. Oh, right. You know, Lord, 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 but as a believer, you can't come to God no any kind of way because we are more accountable. Amen. We know better. Yes. You know, I can't sit there and know I'm lying and then I have to tell God to overlook it. Hey, you know, Lord, I, <laughs> we're far away. <laughs> that ain't going to work with God. Hey, don't listen to them no more than that excuse. God don't play no games. Hey, hey, Amen. No, he no, he so we're going to, I keep talking about prayer the inside job, so we're going to understand. Let's go to Isaiah 51. I mean, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 15. Uh, 
I can't pronounce the word I'm looking for, but I know they were helping me, but they helping me in the wrong way because they was more caring to me instead of giving me the, the, the um, discipline that I really need. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. No, you keep doing the same thing. You ain't sorry. You, you look sorry. You act sorry. But you ain't sorry. But if you were sorry, you would change. Amen. That's what real sorry means. Yes. So repent and you turn away from it. Turn away. Man, well, I still got my tools in it, but it's all right. No. <laughs> so we understand now that, you know, certain prayer that if it ain't right, God don't even pay no attention. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews, Chapter 12, verse 6. Amen. I love that. I used to be speaking. Lord, I, I got to write all these scriptures down. They say, no, that's where you got the words from. <laughs> you know where you're at. Amen. Amen. So we're going to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. Amen. For God, we, and a lot of this, the Holy Spirit already laid down the foundation. That's what I love about it. It says, for the Lord just disciplines those he loves and he punish each one he accepts as a child. So we have to understand the, dis the difference between discipline and punishment. Discipline comes with a lot of grace and mercy. Punishment comes with little, few grace and mercy. You, you ever heard, you say, but I'm, I'm taking my hands off you. You, you want to be hard-headed? Learn the hard way. That's punishment. When God just kept like, okay, do what you do with And that's punishment because, boy, when the end of the result, look at the post of a son. Okay, he wanted to leave this. Day. Go ahead on in. Look at like he almost eaten in the hog pen, lost everything he had. That's punishment. We still have a grace and mercy over us, but the punishment of God is like, I'm going to step back and let you go ahead on with the hard head. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that, that's what, so we understand now. About discipline and punishment. Okay. And then we go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 23. When in that hour, it got the money about the Lord is saying, How many will say, Lord, Lord? He said, They would not enter into the kingdom. And how they were going to boast about what they done, I done, I done prophesied, I cast out devils in your name, and he told them, Get away from me. So we understand prayer the inside job. Yeah. It ain't what you do. It's what's in you. Amen. Because yeah. a lot of people do a lot of things, but all for the wrong reason. Right. Yeah. You have to love you as long as I get what I want to get from you. But as soon as you say no, I mean, I can't stand that joke anyway. See? So you got to be careful. Be careful. That's why it says, you know, the Bible talks about wolves and sheep clothing. You know your father. Hello. People get too nice, but what's behind that nice this thing got? What's behind? So we understand now about prayer to inside y'all. It's time for us to know the why behind the what. The last verse is Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23. When they was telling Jesus about what they done in his name and all that. And he said, get away from me. You the nick, full of the nick. It ain't in your heart. So it's time for us to know the why behind the what. Why am I not seeing what I'm praying for in my life? Amen. Yeah. I just want to understand, you know, God, I want, God let me speak on the word I used to fear. And I'm talking about prayer. And the reason why I feel prayer, I mean, I used to see people pray. I have been there, people fall out, and boy, and people healed, and, and boy, they come to real like, Lord, I'm God always has no one pray, huh? I'm trying to pre meditate what I'm going to say before I get there. You know, can't remember my damn word. I'm like, Lord, you, you won't. You really? Because in prison, we had like 3,000 people in there. <coughs> come, come in and come out pray. No one pray. But to let it be made known, the reason why I couldn't pray was because I didn't know and understand the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, you know, Praying ain't about people pleasing God. Yeah. You know, trying to say things that people need to hear. What yeah. you think you know. Yeah. Holy Spirit teaching you. So this morning, I can give you a lot of knowledge about prayer. Like the consistent prayer in Luke 8, 18, 1 
was talking about the that persistent widow that kept going to the judge and stuff. How she was persistent, but you know, in that prayer we got to be persistent. I could talk to you about the keys of prayer. You know, one of them was in Matthew chapter 21 when Jesus said, Give unto Caesar what's his, and give unto God what's his. You know. I could talk to you about the answer of prayer of forgiveness. You know, I can also, which is in Mark 11, 25. I can also talk to you about praying for others, like Stephen, when he was stoned, he was like, Lord, forgive him. Even Jesus on the cross said, forgive him, Father. He was praying for him before he was dying. But what good is the knowledge of prayer if you have no understanding about it? That's right. You know, in Hosea 4, 6, we quit it. You know, that verse says that, uh, um, my people are destroyed for the line now. Yeah, I know that verse. But when the Holy Spirit showed me this verse out of the NLT, I had to jump back, y'all. It says like this here. Hosea 4, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. God says, my people are being destroyed because they do not know me. Mm -hmm. It say it, but God is not. But it took me to another you destroyed because you don't know me. You know of me, but you don't know me. You don't spend enough time with me to know me. Yeah. You think a Sunday morning service or a Tuesday night Bible study is all that. It is about me. I am the God of all. Amen. Your full life would not even know all about me. So, okay, Lord. Amen. So, we're going to, to, to the part of knowing the why behind the way. Amen. You know. Many are crying, Lord, Lord. They're talking about the killing. Sickness. Many are crying to the Lord of heaven when his kingdom is inside. I thank you, Holy Ghost, you brought me back to that. That many are crying. We're talking about believers now. The Holy Spirit has woke me up on where I'm at now. Many are crying, you know, oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, believers, they're always crying. Oh, look at the killing, Lord, Lord. The God, you shoot. The sickness, Lord, Lord. The corona and everything. We're crying to the God of heaven when the kingdom of God is in us.
not talking to my family. Even those that uh, at a point in their life that they're ready to accept Christ. It's time to let go of the phone. The phone. It's time to move up on a Sunday morning fellowship to a 24-7 everyday life relationship with God. And I, I love this part that I was talking to the Holy Spirit. And I said, the only dust that's on my body is dust says the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so I want y'all to pick that one up. I said, you know, a lot of people didn't, didn't say, well, I ain't nothing on your Bible but dust. The only dust on mine is dust says the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hey, it's time. Fact, I'm, I'm giving this from the heart. It's time for the manifestation of the evidence of his power and purpose in our lives. Amen. We're not, we don't serve a weak God, a lost God, a confused God, a powerless God. Mm -hmm. And if that same God is within us, it's time for things to change. Amen. When you walk in the present, people always start backing up. Oh, I know that is. You ain't never been around people say, they'll, they'll say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the manifestation of evidence. That's what's in you is real. It ain't about us, but it's real. Whoa, well, well, you all right, you all right. But uh, I think you know what? You'll see change in people before you see change in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's how the Holy Spirit is. A lot of people, I don't know. You have a few times, hey, 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 don't do that. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, right there, bro. That ain't because of your outside action. That's because they see what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. See, I can understand why the world is crying, but why is the church crying? That's the other one. Talking about prayer this morning. 
in Proverbs chapter 4, the Amplified Bible says, with all you have gotten, get understanding, discern, comprehend, and, and interpretation. A lot of people will tell you, I got all of those. But they don't understand who he is. Some will tell you, I know the Bible. But they don't understand how to even cry to their life. Mm -hmm. Then you got something to say, well, I know how to speak the word, but they do not understand what the word means. They have no meaning or understanding of the meaning of what they're speaking. Mm -hmm. Because some people will take a text out, one text that apply for them, and they'll hold on to it. But you got to read before, you got to read after. Might have to read a whole chapter to get a full understanding. Because see, I can say, but God said, God give you a heart desire. You pray for it, and whatsoever you have, he'll give to you. But when you get the full understanding, according to his will. Amen. See, Amen. my will ain't always God's will, just because it's good. good. It's, if it's all pleasing just for me and it has no glory for him, God ain't got time for that. Amen. So, as I was reading that, that scripture, I was going to go on over. Oh, he said, see, that's what you're messing up right there, son. He said, go back and read that. I went back and said, well, with all you have gotten, you get understanding, discernment, comprehending, and interpretation. He said, well, what those three words mean? Uh, well, um, I think, um, see, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. So I'll share this with y'all also. When you come across certain words that the Spirit stop you at, look it up. Yeah. Get understanding of it. Don't just stop at one little thing. So now, show me, show me a little bit more information about that. And then before you know it, back in the Bible, you start seeing it everywhere. Oh! Yeah. That's how we grow in the Word. Amen. That's how we allow the Spirit to increase our knowledge and understanding of God. Amen. So, we went to discern. That's what I'm let me look up the sermon. The sermon is keenness of sight. Like knowing his voice. I remember when I was out, I used to look kid out there. Of all the kids that we out there playing, most at certain times you look at me in the house. Mom calling, no, no, I don't care how many mothers that's calling for the child. Mom calling. I know my mama voice. Oh, so that's how we, we gotta be with the Holy Spirit. Whoa, no, that's God. I know God's voice. That, that, that counterfeit that the devil trying to talk about? No, that ain't God, man. That ain't God. Why would God tell me he wants me to be closer to him, but yet take this position here that's going to stop me from being where I'm supposed to be at with him? No, that ain't God. It's no good. They're increasing in it. Why well, give you make more money and everything? No. I'm fooling this money going to perish. What does it profit me to gain the whole world and lose my own soul? No, so you need that. Amen. 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 So we understand that this time is a keenness of insight. Know that you know that you know. Comprehending, comprehension, is the ability to learn, the capability, the capacity for understanding. Comprehend something. And interpretation is an act of understanding, translation. Explaining the meaning of the scripture or text. So I'm like, you know, what's, what's, going on? What's, the, what's, what's the difference between understanding and comprehending? It said that both words grasp the meaning of, but understanding expresses the full results, while comprehending expresses the process of getting there. So when you comprehend something, you know, you're intaking it out. So in other words, comprehend brings forth change. You become what you understand. When you comprehend something, you become that. Yeah. You know, what it means to walk by faith, not by sight. I comprehend it when I like, you know, I got this problem. But my faith says, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Facts say it is, but truth says, don't worry about it. Amen. Amen. I comprehend what God says about it. Amen. That's what comprehending is. Amen. Override your opinions of the explanation of my Lord now wait no 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 I come in with the words you know it's like my grandfather did it the doctor said well you know they got all the white suits and they had to surround me I'm laying in the hospital 
you know, when that machine said, well, Mr. Washington, I will go to the So that boy there, he done. And then that's what he do, he done. So even if you come out this home, he ain't gonna be no good anyway, he'll be a pastor. My grandfather comfort him, but God told him, he said, no. Since I have the authority to say so, you let God make that decision. Amen. Look what I'm at today. Amen. That's comfort him. That's comfort him. So, I know that God is faithful. So no matter what my facts I live by, it's true. Let, and let the word say, let God be true. And every man Amen. And it's not, you know, don't, don't limit it to every man, everything that ain't of God be a lie. Amen. The, oh, you got cancer. No, that's a lie. Amen. God didn't give it to him. So what? Yeah, my body manifesting a lot of this and a lot of that. I ain't gonna deny. I ain't gonna live like a fool and be in the night, but I don't have to accept that. That's another thing you got to understand in prayer. You know, prayer can change things. Mm -hmm. Because why would I accept something that wasn't given to me? Is it like somebody to come and try to give you a bone? Man, why do that? No, I don't want that. That draws now. You know, I know that the, the image is waiting for me to get back and say, hey, you know, want this package? No, I don't need a studio, but I don't need no packages. I got a full package of Jesus. And in the mind, if I would allow my mind, well, you know, just it's just this one time, but that's all it took for me to get hooked. One time. That's all the enemy needs, one time. That's all he needs. He, he don't need no 24 7 with you. He just needs one time. When he came at Joe, he just took that one time. And look how many times. You, 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 good Lord. All that on one time? And it could do it, so he comes so that he's going to come back. He came back. But Lord, I'm going to make deal with you. I got to get a little deep with this thing. But see what I love about God, no matter what we face, God knows it. In it, in it, in it. Amen. Amen. So, why is interpretation so important then? <laughs> we, we're still on prayer, y'all, but I'm just laying the foundation. Amen. Why is interpretation so important? It's through the interpretation that the researcher can well understand the abstract principle that works beneath his findings. Now, we had two interpreters in the Bible. There's probably more, but I'm the two that the Lord showed me. One was Joseph, and that was out of Genesis, chapter 40, verse 8. And Daniel was also an interpreter. In Daniel, chapter 2, if anyone want to go back and read it. But in, in Genesis, chapter 40, verse 8, Pharaoh officers came to, to Daniel and said, we, we have a dream a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. Look what Joseph told him. Joseph said to them, do not interpret this belong to God. Oh, so it's not Joseph, it's not Daniel. I don't care what Bible college you don't went to. I don't care what degree you have or how holy and deep you are. If it ain't Holy Spirit, it ain't God. So everything comes from God. So we understand that even this, the Holy Spirit will give us the capability to being able to interpret His word. Because you got a lot of false interpreters out here now. If, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in it, it sounds believable. And the Bible even warns us in the book of Timothy how in many out there now, people are leaving the truth for each and each. Yeah. You know, they're leaving the truth. Truth ain't truth no more. Now you tell me. Okay. God made man and woman. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, but God going to prove this same sex marriage. Huh? What God saying? See, but they don't even made it alone now to verify that. Wow. When God had it in And then it, it got the men with the men now that now okay, the, the commercials say, you know, you take this pill and You'll be all right. So y'all can continue to sin. Not just how much that the money to leave. Not all that work. Can't y'all see God said ain't that big should be? Amen. How much money do you have to realize it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, whoo, God is good. So, we're going to this other part here. And I call this part 
I call this part suicide thing. And it's, it's a word that I use is called unsure. Unsure is suicide thing. You know, when, when, when you really find yourself saying, well, I, I think maybe that's suicide thing. Yeah. You know? The word of God teaches us he wants us to know. Know that I am God. No, I, but I, I, I guess. I don't know, guess. Proverbs 3, 5, damn five words say, do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are you trying to say? Uh, well, what are you trying to say? In order to understand God's word for your life, you must first understand the God of your life. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that's so important. Now. Because some believers
Since we are, and we're going to learn how to be our, our God. The first thing we do in verse 6, we got to humble. It says, humble thyself under the mighty hands of God. So, humbleization is one way you beat through John. You humble before God. The other way is, in verse 7, cast all your cares upon him. Another way you beat your, beat your lion is you got to cast it upon God. Humbling yourself means to let go of your pride. In verse 6, it means to let go of your pride of what you think. What you think you know. And allow the Holy Spirit to teach you what you need to know. That's what it means to humble yourself. Amen. Casting all your cares upon him in verse 7. There is nothing too small that doesn't touch the heart of God. Nothing too big, God can't help. Cast your cares upon him. We talk about beating this line, y'all. You know? Amen. And then it goes on down now to verse 8. Be sober. It ain't talking about drunk, being sober, don't drink. It ain't got nothing to do with drinking wine. Mm -hmm. Being sober means to be serious about the fact that you have an enemy who wants to devour you. Never being sober. You got to be on point. It's just like I had an incident dealing with the phone. You know, somebody tried to try to hack my Facebook thing. And the same one that tried to get me and got Brother Ellen Martin's when the Holy Spirit was talking to me. But see, if I was so minded, I would do exactly what that person had wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. Being so of me being the type of the spirit. Oh, what, what you say, what, what you want me to do? Hello? I remember in the Bible when he kept calling, he kept calling, he kept hearing that voice and said, you call me, man, you call me. No, that was the Spirit of God. Sometimes God will wake up in your sleep. Yeah. You hear that voice. Amen. So we got to be sober. Amen. Then it goes on and say, be diligent. Amen. Diligent, that means to be on God. It is not a question if the devil will attack. Because we know the thief coming nothing but to steal, kill, and destroy. Then it goes and tell about how he walks around looking. He don't want unshaped. He already got it. He didn't have to the believers. Mm -hmm. Then in Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verse 27, says, Neither give peace to the devil. In other words, don't give the devil room to work his way into your life. Amen. See, I, I use myself for example. I have to stop entertaining those that want to take me back to where I, God done brought me from. You know, what I'm going to hang on, what am I going to do? You know, I ain't doing no good. But what I'm going to do, what, why am I there? Right. Why am I sitting around? Sooner or later, it's going to rub off on me. Yeah, yeah. Why do I want to have a relationship with a woman that don't want God, so how she going to want me? All right, man. Come on. I need to have a room by entertaining. Well, I can change. Maybe I can change her. A leopard can't change his spots. Well, okay. yeah, they all look at all. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So don't give room. Ephesians 6 11 says, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wealth of the devil. To stand against the wealth of the devil does not mean that we call him out and look for a fight. Come on, say, I'm ready. No, 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 no. It ain't talking about that. It means that we need to protect ourselves from his trickery. That's what the word wells means. Trickery. How the devil tricks you. See, I was tricked in the girls by, you know. I was allowing me to sell. I was making plenty of money selling weed. And the head kept this time. Man, you know, you don't triple your money with this stuff here. Yeah. Look, homies, that little thing in there. And the trick was for me that all I had to do was try. One time. Mm. I never did the same. Mm. When that spirit got into me, poof, my life went to the hole. I I paid his head about three times. <laughs> so be aware. And one example is like uh, how Satan tricked Eve. He tricked Eve. And the, the trickery is for believers, I want you to understand, it ain't get away from this horn devil and all that that they're showing you in these movies and all that. He will try to trick you with the word. But he got Eve. Well, you know God ain't said that. <laughs> and she fell for it. He even tried Jesus with the same trick. Now, you know the word said, now he's going to be his angel and jump off of it. <laughs> but Lord gave him back that same word with an understanding. You know, his trickery ain't like, uh, you know, 
us how to get me to do something. No, his trick is to try to get us to doubt the word of God. That's his trick. He'll try to, but see, it's, if you look at something, that's how confusion read him. See how the word contradicting itself? I'm about Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the word. Those I stay on that page, I never go wrong. Amen. You can't go wrong with that. So, let's say I have a three weeks, two more weeks here to reveal what God has given to me. So we're going into this part. Ooh, I love it, I love it. Do you know him? Yes, everybody knows there is a God. Even in James chapter 2, 19, and even the devils also believe in trouble. But what I'm talking about is a spiritual knowledge with an understanding based on the on faith in God and God alone. Amen. No back up man. Mm -hmm. No ace in the hole. No need no set in the pit. Mm -hmm. It's going to be God. Others going to be God. For real, for real. See, some people just want to pray, but they have no foundation. In other words, they have no understanding. Mm -hmm. See, knowing, knowing God is a lifestyle. Amen. Isaiah chapter 29, 13, the Lord says, These people say they're lying. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me. The worship of me is nothing more than man-made rules. <laughs> it's like me, you know, when I used to go out to the club, the whole club. But I used to go out to the club, boy, I give, boy, I give the devil my all. And I think that when I come to church, I'm giving God my all. But that ain't, that ain't God. The Bible said you can't be the one, eat the heart of coke. Yeah. You can't serve the devil and serve God too. I, if I'm hard and sad and then come in here Sunday morning and I'm feeling the Holy Ghost, uh uh, son. It don't work like that. Yes, that's right. you, know, you say you're mine, you're mine. That's why John said, he said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Amen. He draw a line. God can draw a line. Now, if you ain't going to be there, you ain't. You ain't going to stop him with me, son. Amen. Because my glory, I don't share it with nobody. <laughs> you know. And one of the things, you know, God was letting me make known he was talking about how people have chosen other loyalties besides him, put other things before God. You know, I got to I do this, Lord. I got to have that, Lord. You know, and like one of the things, you know, taking on a new or second job that will take you out of the will of God's place for you, like the church, just for a little more money. If God can take a fish, to pay taxes, mm -hmm. why would I worry about my situation? Yeah, yeah it look tough, it look hard, and I've been seeing some red papers in the mail, final notice and everything, but Lord God, <laughs> if you say you supply my needs, you supply my needs. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll be honest with y'all, even when I had to eat out of dumpsters, God protect me because you know that kind of stuff could keep me. I could be, man, who knows what they did there. Yeah. Amen. You know, but God allowed me to experience that. But he also blessed me within it. You know, sleeping under those bridges and stuff, man, you know, pistols took my head and the people with the pistol crying, I should have been crying. Hmm. But I learned through that about his grace and mercy. Hmm. And by putting things before him. Now, the some of people come around and they go all the way on the other side of the street. Who's with that boy? Amen. Amen. I'm glad. Another thing about putting something before God, being in a relationship with someone who says, hey, don't take all that. You know, they're, they're, they truth mean more to, to you than their facts mean more to you than God's truth. Because I had men to say that, man, they that shit. They that shit. And people ain't good. Be that church. Yeah. All they're doing is trying to rule you. Be that church. And them same people that I used to run behind and follow them, but when they got me to the point that I was done, they left. Mm -hmm. And who came back? The same family that I ran from had their own right of, come on. Come on, come on bro. Come on. Amen. Come on. Some of my sisters are out there right now. Amen. 
That lady was over here. He home. I'm never sharing with my other hand that I don't want to die. I don't care about to die. And it touched her to the spirit. She prayed and God woke me up. So I'm here. Amen. 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 You know, another selfish thing is that, you know, people say that, you know, Lord, I'm going to take your word out on Sundays and Bible study. But the rest of the week, nah. No. Nah. This ain't no part time affair here. Amen. Come this, on. this relationship here is more than that. Amen. Too many believers know about God. But they have no understanding of God. One thing we must understand is God does not change. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, God will change to this situation. No, your situation will change to God. Amen. Is, so, so is there a limit to God's grace? Either his grace is limited, or grace alone can save you. And of course, we know grace alone cannot save. Otherwise, the entire world, including the most wicked people, and taking God's grace for, for, for granted, we read about Saul, you know, we were talking about King Saul, how God told him to destroy everything, and he's going to hold back the good stuff, and all this, that took God's grace for granted. He said, just like you rejected to do God's will, he rejected you as king. Mm -hmm. So we, let it be made known, you know, that we do not to take his grace for granted. And I'm, for the Holy Spirit, getting down to my closing here. Family, do you know? A fool would have you believe that you can live like hell, pray, and still be spiritually blessed. But please, please, show me that in the Bible. Because if it ain't written, it ain't God. Amen. 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 So I, I want to read, I got to read, read uh, James chapter 4, start with verse 1 to 4. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. 